Hey, Church, Pastor Anthony here. I'm super excited to kick off a brand new series called Family Matters. Come on, in the midst of a, a busy world and a chaos world and, and our, with our presence being required to be in so many different places at so many different times, we want to make sure that we're carving out intentional time of making sure that we're spending time with our families, with our loved ones, with our first ministry. So even here at Celebration, come on, this is something that we're putting an emphasis on in the month of July of making sure that, hey, family still matters. We're super excited of the different teaching and principles that we're going to be leaning into in this month in this beautiful series that we're going to be diving deeper into because, hey, God has a divine purpose. And through that purpose, God is calling us to serve our families. Wow. I I'm being reminded that even Jesus himself said it this way. He said it in John 13, verse 34. I give you a new command. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. If you love what? One another. Every one of you, come on. If you are my disciple, this is what Jesus is saying here. And I'm going to lean into this a little bit. This is what Jesus is saying. He said, if you are my disciple, you are called to love. If you are my disciple, if you belong to me, if you are what? If you are family, this family is going to serve. This family is going to love one another. Uh, serving is love and love is serving. See, you can't have one without the other. They both go hand in hand. And Jesus is teaching his disciples here that, hey, being a part of this family, God's family, we are a family that's going to love. I, I want to turn our attention to Mark chapter two. I, I think this is a very great text of scripture of teaching us of what serving is all about. I mean, and this, just to give you a little bit of context, this is four individuals who, who went and, and saw a need and they did what family? They served. And these are four individuals where we don't know their name. <laughs> these are four individuals where we don't even know their title. Thank God that names and title is not the premise or even the emphasis of where serving begins, but serving begins with love. I, I love that the scripture didn't give us the titles or, or, or the names, but they showed that these individuals had a heart and saw a need. So they did what? They served. So you can turn your attentions to Mark chapter two, because th th this is awesome because, and here's what we're praying. We're, what we're praying as we dive into the scriptures is that we don't have, that we don't shift into a me mode. But we shift into a we mode. Uh, uh, what is a we? A we mode, Pastor Anthony. A we mode is actually somebody who's not concerned just about themselves. Me, 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 me. Come on, family. We live in a society where it's all about myself. It's all about me. It's all about how can I make myself better. It's all about how can I advance in life. It's all about how can I go after my goals. I just wonder if we're pausing and taking some time to say, how can I serve them? How can I serve the we that surround us? And, and this is what we see in Mark chapter two. And I'm going to kick it off from verse number two in the CSB. It, it says so many people gathered together that there was no room, not even in the doorway. And he was speaking the word to them, speaking about Jesus. Jesus is, is at the house. A lot of us believe, scholars believe that this was actually Peter's house. And, and Jesus is preaching at Peter's house. And, and everybody knows that and, there, and they, everybody is coming. And, and here are four individuals that Jesus is preaching and they see a need and they have to bring the need to the word. I want you to catch that because it says in verse three, they came to him bringing a paralytic carried by four of them since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. They removed the roof above him and 
after digging through it, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. I think this is very, I think this is very key because even though they ran into a barrier, they did not use the barrier as an excuse to not serve. So they got very creative. They, they went the extra mile. And I really believe this is what serving is all about. It's not, it's not stopping at an excuse, but it's continuing to go the extra mile to serve the, your loved ones around you. See, we can all, all of us, we can make sort of rational, I guess I can call it explanations for not serving. We can either say, hey, I, I don't have time to serve. I, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I don't have any special skills to serve or, or how about this? They don't even need me. See, we can come up with any type of excuse that will excuse us from not serving, but I love the heart family. I, I love the heart of these four individuals. They did not rest in an excuse, but they wanted to get the individual or the need to Jesus. So they went the extra mile. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this title down. And here's what we're going to be talking about for our subject matter for today, family. Here to serve. Let us pray. Father God, we honor you. We love you. We invite you into this midst of, of diving in, into your word. Even right now, Heavenly Father, we honor you. And we, we ask that you release a mighty word into us. Transform our minds and, and our hearts, Lord God. Let them be on one accord with you that even in this mist right now, that we were aim to please you, Lord God. We aim to please you by serving you, and we aim to please you by serving the ones that's around us. Teach us today, disciple us today, make us more like you, Jesus. We pray this in your matchless name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Family, just a few weeks ago, Pastor Brenda and I had an awesome opportunity to travel down to Cuba to do missions work. I mean, family, this missions trip was life changing. We go down with the expect, expectation, our, our hardest to go down and serve the people of Cuba. When we arrive down, we're, we're, e we're eager, we're pumped, we're ready to go. And, and, our, and our translator who's, who actually works for the church um, that we were a partner in down in Cuba, and I love the saying that, that, that she said to us, and it, it resonated in my heart. And it's a good reminder. She said, hey, this family is here to serve. This family, if you're part of this family, we, we serve. We, we man, Pastor Brennan, I, we came down with the expectation to serve them. But to be honest, they were serving us. And, and, and she made the emphasis on, hey, if you're part of this family, you're here to serve. See, see, some people serve out of guilt. Some people can even serve out of, out of responsibility, or even some people can even serve out of pressure. But God's word teaches us, family, to not serve from those motives, but rather serve from a place of gratitude. See, here's why you serve. Here's why you go the extra mile. Here's why you want to find different ways of making sure that you live to give because you have a place of gratitude. You understand that I will not be where I am right now if it have not been for the Lord that has been on my side. This is why I give. This is why I go the extra mile. Gratitude, family, is the, it's the centerpiece of what keeps you grounded and keeps you humble because you have a assurance of knowing I am serving because of God's love in my, my life. So I want to teach you, family. I, I want to spend some time. I want to give you some scripture. If you're taking notes, this is going to be good because I want to give you guys five things in a Bible that talks about serving God. Because when we serve God, we serve others around us. And this is what the first one, if you're taking notes, write this down, family. Serving is one of your life purposes. Yeah. Mark chapter 8, verse 34, and amplify it, it says this, if, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me. 
believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Serving is one of your life purposes. See, we don't serve for the benefit of convenience. And even Jesus is teaching here, hey, one of your purpose here on life is to follow me. And even doing following me will come sometimes where you're going to have to suffer. Even when you're following me, sometimes you're going to be inconvenient. Even when you're following me through serving, you're going to find yourself in season where this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. But Jesus is teaching his disciples here, which is, is teaching us here that serving is one of our purposes. See, until you learn how to serve, you're really not living. You're just existing. And, and if you want to make a living by what you get, you make a life by what you give away. Mm, can I say that again? Yes, yes. If you want, if you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give away. So yes, yeah, see, you can you can easily try to find your identity in, in, in your living and what you do. But but that that that's just living. But if you want to actually live in Christ, your identity is in Christ. And Christ said it this way that, hey, I did not come to condemn the world. Come on. But I actually came to what? Save the world. I saved the world by serving. I'm here to serve. And this is the example that Jesus is teaching us that that God is always calling us family to not live a selfish life. See, he's actually calling us to actually become selfless, not selfish, but selfless. See, this is why we're leaning in. And one of my questions to you right now is, is how are you serving the ones that's around you? How are you going the extra mile and, and being generous to the ones around you? Or, or are we still in a me mode and not a we mode? Because a we, um, excuse me, a me mode is actually a mode that's very selfish, but a we mode is a mode that's saying I'm becoming selfless so that I can glorify my King Jesus. And through serving, we all become better. See, that's the mind of Christ. See, I wonder how, how are you serving your family in this season? My second point is this is serving makes you more like Jesus. I said it, I said it this earlier in Matthew 20, 28. It says, for even a son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if you don't learn how to serve others, you will never grow spiritually, spiritually in, in maturity. See, 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 in, in this season of your life, are, are, are we still focused on I and not focused on him? I'm finding out this more family, even in my walk with Christ, to not always put the focus on myself. The more I put the focus on Christ, Christ shows me, just like these four individuals in Mark, Christ shows me ways to give and ways to serve and ways to glorify Christ. If you're looking for better ways to glorify Christ, serve the ones that's around you. Man, could it be a challenge this month? How how can I serve more? How can I serve my family more? How, how can I serve my spouse more, my kids more, my, my, my neighbor more? Come on, God's house more. How, how can I go into the community and serve more? Because it's all about the family. And, and if we can serve our family better, we can serve our community better. If we can serve our family better, we can serve God's house better. Come on. If we can serve the family better, we can serve our neighbor better. I, I, I think it's a principle here. I, I think it's a flow here that God is saying that, hey, if we focus in on family and serve the ones around us, we create a repetition in our life. We create a cycle in our life. We create a mindset that's like Christ and that flows not that flow just doesn't stop inside the home that flow moves outside the home where it touches your neighbor it touches your community and praise God it touches God's house 
See, this is serving makes you more like Jesus. God, even in this season, make us more like you. And, and you're teaching us right now, the more we become like Jesus, I just see myself serving more. I'm not looking to be served. No, I'm looking to serve. A third point is this is serving is the highest use of your time. Serving is the highest use of your time. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says it this way. Watch this family. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is not in vain. If you want to make an impact and leave a legacy, the highest use of your time is to serve God by serving others. Your service to the Lord is never wasted. Mm, come on, can, 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 can we speak on that? See, the seeds that you are sowing right now, friend, the, these seeds leads to your legacy. And, and, and I'm just curious, how are you building your legacy even right now? See, your legacy should be rooted in Christ. Your legacy should be rooted in inheritance that God has given you. Your, your legacy should be rooted. It's not what you give. It's what you're leaving people behind. And the best thing that you can leave behind is the word of God. The best thing that you can leave behind is praying for the next generation. The best thing that you can leave behind is an example to uplift one another. I just wonder when you leave this earth, what are people going to say about your example? What are people going to say? about how you love them? What are people going to say about how you created a space for them to move forward? And could it be that when they look at you, they see Christ? See, this is the highest use of your time. Is it, is it just about you focus? Or the highest use of your time, could it be that, hey, God, I want to glorify your name and, and I want to do that through serving. God, so even in this season, God, God, the highest use of my time, I, I just wonder if my job getting the highest use of my time. I, I just wonder uh, what I'm trying to build in this season is getting the highest use or value of my time. I, I want to make sure that I'm carving out intentional time and spending time with my, my spouse and spending time with my kids and spending time with, with the ones that surround me because I want to make sure that I'm depositing in the right seat. I want to make sure that I'm actually serving them and they're just not serving me. I, I, I want to make sure that in this season, family matters. And family matters because my presence of serving them, it matters. My fourth point is this, family, is serving is the secret to greatness. Mm. Matthew 20, 26 says it this way. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Here is Jesus. Jesus is talking to the disciples. And Jesus having a conversation because the disciple is saying, hey, who, when you leave Jesus, who's going to be the greatest among you? And Jesus is setting the record straight. It, it's not a pedestal that you're a, a podium, a platform that you're getting ready to stand on. No, it's not about how high you stand, but it's how low you go to serve. See, the greatest among you is actually going to be the servant. Can, 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 can I paint a picture for you? When you go into the restaurant, it's not the one that's sitting down eating the food. It's the greater. It's the one that's actually preparing the food and bringing it out. And how can I serve you? See, that the, the society would say the one that's actually sitting down is the greatest because on the outside, they look a certain way. But actually, Jesus' kingdom, his kingdom teaches us this, is that, no, it's not the one who looks great on the outside. It's the one who has the servant heart on the inside. Great is among you is the servant. Wow, God, in this season, how, how can I serve more? How can I be more like you? Because true greatness comes from servanthood, not from living for yourself. The greatest leader are those who serve the most. See, yeah, if, you, if you're climbing whatever ladder in this season that you're climbing, make sure that it's a ladder of servant. 
any type of senior leader, it should actually mean senior servant. It, it should actually mean, no, it's not just climbing a ladder so you don't serve anymore. It should be a ladder to show people, no, when you, you climb this ladder, it's a ladder that I'm actually going to serve the most. And could it be that God is leaning in and he's, he's, he's having a reality check with our heart in this season to make sure that we're actually spending time to serve the ones that's around us. And my last point is this. My fifth point is this. And I, I love this one because this is a great reminder. It says serving will be rewarded in heaven. This is Mark 10, verse 29 through 30. Jesus said, truly, I say to you, there is no one who, who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel. Watch this. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. Here's Jesus is saying the ones who have actually served that trust me, they will not be forgotten. They will be taken care. They will actually, because they actually chose to serve me, I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to take care of their entire family. Ultimately, hear me when I say this, Jesus is your real boss, if I can say it that way. Because, and he will reward you one day for everything that you have done. The Bible teaches us that we will actually get crowns in heaven for the very things that we have did for him on earth. And I think we need to be reminded of that because sometimes when serving, it can feel unfair. When you're serving, it can feel like you're overlooked. When serving, it can feel like you're just doing the dirty work. But I want, I want to actually lean into your heart a little bit and also check the posture of our heart. Could it be that God is actually shaping your heart in this season, but with the understanding that God will always reward you? So I speak this over your life. Do not grow weary in well-doing because in due season from doing the work, God is your rewarder and God will always reward you. So I pray for the passion of serving in, in this season for you. I pray that in this season that you will continue to be enthusiastic about serving God and serving his people. So whatever you may find yourself in this season, I, I, I want to I lay out three challenges for you. And if you're taking notes, I think this is going to be good because I, I want you to ask yourself the question, how are you serving? H how, how am I serving in this season, God? The first one is this, how, how am I serving my family? And I want to say, hey, carve out some intention and time to spend time with your family in this season. That, that, that's, that's your loved ones around you. And, and maybe, hey, maybe for the one who, who actually is living away from family in this season, hey, maybe, maybe this is your friends, your roommates, your coworkers, whoever you may call family. Uh, and God is saying, hey, how are you spending intentional time with serving them? My second one is this, is another challenge. How are you serving God's family? This is God's house. Uh, uh, is, are you in a season where you're sitting on your gifts? Or could it be a season where you say, hey, God, you have given me specific, uh, unique, special gifts to build your house. I remember years ago, God gave me this word and it has been a motivator for me to make sure my, my, my make sure I'm grounded and continuing to serve God. God said, he said, Anthony, if you were if you will always help build my house, I will always build yours. Man, from that moment when God spoke that word to me, I, 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 I just know, hey, I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to serve God's house. And whatever you want me to do, God, if you want me to clean the house, I'll clean the house. If you want me to open the door, I'll open the door. If you want me to drive this or transport this, I'll do this. If you want me to lead or teach here, I'll do this. What, whatever you want me to do, God, I'm here to serve your house and serve your people. Man, God, I think that's a word for somebody that's in this season of their life. God to say, hey, it's time to serve. It's time to sow back. 
And my third one is this, when it comes to serving, hey, how are you serving your neighborhood? How are you serving your community? My family coming up in here pretty soon, yeah, we're going to put the link in. We have Serve Day coming up. Wow, what, what a great opportunity for you and your family to come along with celebration, your church family, and not just go to church, but actually family. We're on this specific Saturday, we're actually going out into the community to do what? To serve to serve tangible needs, to to, to release the gospel, but also be a living testament of what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Here's a great opportunity. And right on the bottom, you're going to see a link where you're going to be able to, to, to click on the link and you can sign up, whether that's through this video or go to our app or go to our website to get all of the information. But hey, here's a challenge that I got. I don't want to stay in a, a me mode. Yeah. But I want to I want to shift into a we mode. I want to pray that for you as we get ready to close right here. I want to pray that because, hey, 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 I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. How can I serve you? I think that's the posture of our heart that God is calling us in this season. How can I serve? How can I serve my family? How can I serve my loved ones? How can I serve God's house? How can I serve the community that's around me? God, show me where I have fallen short and give me the strength to actually move in that posture. So Father God, we honor you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you that your word teaches us, even as you've shown with these four individuals, that they did not stop at a barrier. They did not stop at an excuse, but they continue to serve even in a creative way. God, we ask that you will rest on our minds even right now, rest on our heart, Lord God, that in this season that we can come up with creative ways to serve our family, to serve our loved ones, the ones that surround us. And even for the ones that perhaps may not be around loved ones, God, could you be calling them to even serve their friends, their roommates, their coworkers, Lord God, the ones that's close by. God, we ask that you will open our eyes in this season to, to show us right where we are as we're holding up the mirror that we can see ourselves right where we are. But even in that midst, Lord God, we thank you for your, we thank you for your grace that cover us and for your grace that pushes us in the right direction. So we just ask that you just rest on each household for everyone that's viewing, viewing the video, even right now, Lord God, that you will uh, move in a powerful way, but in a way that will move us and transform us that we will say, hey God, it's time not to focus on me. Show me how I can focus on we. And we thank you for what you're doing. And for the next set of people, hey, may, perhaps maybe God is speaking to you right now. And the best way to respond, even in this moment, is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And maybe God is speaking to you right now about where, where God is saying, hey, it's time to take that step. And the best way is to actually accept Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior. So I want you to repeat this right after me, a very simple but a powerful prayer. If God is speaking to you right now, I'm, I'm going to lean in a little bit. I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to repeat this right after me. Come on, let's go. Jesus, I love you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I invite you into my heart. Lead me, guide me, transform me. I give you my life and I'm here to serve you all the days of my life. If that's you, family, come on, just shout amen. Amen. And we are here to celebrate you. Come on. Today is a new day and we are here to come along and champion this moment. And if that's you, right when this video ends, I want you to click on the connect card. That's a great way to get connected. We would love to hear from you. One, to, to definitely pray for you, to champion this moment, but also to help you take your next step. God has a next step for you, my friend. And through that next step is serving him and serving the ones that's around you. We would love to invite and bring community around you to support you and champion this moment. And we do all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, family, hey, right before we shift, we want to take a time to pause and, and continue to stay in this posture of worship with our time of giving. 
here at Celebration. We have many different ways and the team, they're going to put it right there on, on a video for you, different ways to give here at Celebration. And you can definitely, you can give through the uh, website, excuse me, the website. You can give through the app. You can also give online as well. And always say, hey, these ways are safe and secure just for you, family. And hey, um, as you're preparing your offering, come on, I want to share one announcement. As I, I mentioned earlier in the message, come on, serve day is right around the corner. And I'm going to put another reminder. Hey, if you have not signed up yet, it is not too late. Come on, we would love to see your beautiful faces along with serving with the uh, church community. It is going to be a fantastic time. And only person that's missing is, is you. So go and sign up. Amen. 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 But hey, as you're preparing your offering, I, I want to pray for you right before our benediction. And I want to pray. So definitely take your offering in and, 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 and hey, maybe this is a reoccurring offering. I always want to pause and say, hey, pray over it. Ask for God's blessing over your offering as you're, you're giving back. And even through your giving, I'll even share this update. Wow. Even for, for serve day, it's through your generosity, church. So we want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for pouring back, living to give. And through your generosity, come on, your church is able to not only have amazing church service on Sunday, but I love the generosity culture that our church have that now we're able to go out into the community and be the hands and feet of Jesus. This is all possible because of your generosity. This is all possible because of your obedience in giving God your yes. So we want to say thank you. We honor you. We encourage you to continue to trust God through your giving and while you're worshiping with your giving. But Father God, we lift up the offering to you right now, Father. We ask that you just release and stretch your hand and cover the offering. We ask that you bless it, Lord God. We ask that, it, that everything that was given, Lord God, that it be released into your kingdom, Lord God, that it would touch the many needs, Lord God. It would expand uh, the reach of your gospel, Lord God, for the ones that have not confessed to Jesus Christ, that they would now be able to hear the gospel and their lives are being changed. Families are being touched. The next generation is being poured into you, Lord God. So we're so grateful for the seed that you're using through this, Lord God. And for the ones that gave, Lord God, we ask that you bless them in a miraculous way, Lord God, that what has been given, Lord God, your word says that you will bring it back even more in a better fold. So we honor you. We love you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face among you. We're so grateful that you always turn your countenance towards us. We ask that you always give us peace and grace throughout all this week. Until we meet again, we love you so much. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your week.